Well, hi, Cheers. I am back with the six books in isolation, and it's a Christmas book. Millie Johnson. I wish it could be Christmas every day. I've learned in February, but hey, Christmas every day. There you go. Read the blab. Okay. Six people looking for a safe harbour, a cozy pub in a snowstorm, a white Christmas to remember. Mary had been trying to get her boss Jack to notice her for four years, but could only see the efficient PA she is at work. We've been holed up with him, finally give her the chance he had been waiting for. Bridge and Luke were meeting for five minutes to set their divorce in motion, or getting trapped with each other, reading like chimney from memories and love. Charlie and Robin were on the way to a luxury hotel in Scotland for a very special Christmas, but Willie Ian had given them everything they were hoping to find, and much more besides. As there was no one to hold on and when to let go, the pushing limits and acceptance of friendship, love, laughter, mince pies, and a magical Christmas. Okay, so they're on the way to the various locations, and when Mr. Hare border, all one that gets snowed in, they break into an inn okay no way of putting it they just break up break into an inn and they're like we need to kind of wake this out and the snow never stops and they turn into this beautiful winter wonderland outside so all six of them are in this house together and first of all there's some bits i very like um you have mary i'm gonna focus a lot on mary okay because you know when you you know when you are reading a book and you just want to shake someone and say get a grip girl okay four years four years with this guy he's been treating her like dirt okay Right, okay, this bit here. Mm -hmm. Jay Butterley was 10 years her senior, just developing silver sprinkles in his eyes, cropped hair and crinkles around his gorgeous, um, great, I'll say, just developed silver sprinkles in his dark cropped hair and crinkles around his gorgeous grey eyes. It seemed to grow more handsome with each year passed, and seemed to grow more invisible. She loved her boss, loved him with all her heart, and not to make, I like working for him, wave, I, I wish he'd locked the door, shoved me on his desk, and hurried the wicked away with me. Way, what is why she offered to drive into a hotel in the northeast when Jack's chauffeur Fred went off sick with his back again? Okay, so Jack runs like a um scone company, okay, like a and um, which is going into like his vegan brand. And he's like Mr. Buttery, okay, he's like all oh, business, all oh, business, all oh, business, okay. And then at this, just by the magic of contrived coincidences, then there's Luke, Luke who runs a vegan firm. What are the odds? I mean. This guy runs a vegan, has like a vegan brand, okay? This guy runs a vegan company. Wow, let's make business together. This felt like quite a coincidence. However, um, Luke I actually like. Essentially, they're married. Luke and Bridge married. They've got together for this divorce. They're staying together. You can see how the relationship became so toxic. It's a kind of, they would have worked well together, but they just met the wrong kind of part of their lives. And L Luke is moving on, and Bridge is just trying to move on, but she feels kind of stuck where she is. You know, she had a terrible, terrible childhood, she grew up in foster care, and she just feels emotionally stuck, okay? And it is kind of nice during this week they spend together that they kind of like, dance between their fours, they do divorce, and I, I like that. A lot of times in these books where characters, um, you know, they snowed in together, they wind up getting back together, this they don't, they actually, the ice between them falls and they separate as friends, and I thought that was really healthy. I have to say to Neil Johnson's writing, that was very, very healthy. I'm actually going to put spoilers here. Oh, vague spoilers. Okay? Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, okay, because, I don't know, Luke is, like, going to a business meeting with a Japanese client. And this bit here, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. And Plant Boy said, look, because he was announcing he was Spartacus. Started the company five years ago. It's done very well, if I say to myself. It was an understatement, thought Jack, as he let an impressive breath out with a single word, well. Every the course of the time, it's a perfectly acceptable way to have meetings these days. However important they are, I like being at home with my partner too much to be a in the world. Don't have to. Why technology if you don't use it? Yeah, why have technology if you don't use it? Okay, and this book, I think, came out, obviously, prior to the system. Now, written in 2020, okay, but I think maybe set in a couple of years ago. Because, obviously, I mean, who hasn't in the last two years done something on Skype or Zoom or... FaceTime, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, they're all together in this house, okay? Luke and, um, and, um, what's his name? Jack, sorry. You know, they're discussing business, keeping ahead of me, work together. Um, Bridge kind of sets the sides, okay, kind of making Mary say, come on, just, you know, you need to do better. She kind of comes like this son's got kind of older sister, um, to Mary, or actually Mary needs. Okay, right. And then also is um, 
for Charlie and Robin. The problem is with this book is you have six people set in this one location in a week, okay? And the book is very, very long. It's over 400 pages. Now, the problem is with this is as everyone is in one location, at various times, I forgot who someone was. The characters seem very, very familiar between Bridge, Mary, Luke and Mark, okay? At various times, sorry, Jack, say Jack, yeah, Mark. Um, at various times, even though the kind of personalities seem to blend, okay, I couldn't tell who was which, and it got very, very frustrated. Normally, in a major awesome book, it takes place over a matter of months, and I always kind of got the old kind of like areas like mothers, partners, this and that. This is just in one location, and it felt very, very cozy. I agree with that, but it felt very kind of, I. At the time, they really stopped caring to care about these people and their problems, which is a horrible thing to say, okay? And then, and this is the biggest problem I have with this book, okay, is the gay couple, Charlie and Robin, okay? Um, they're elderly, um, one's dying, yep, obviously, okay? And this bit here, alright, alright, mm -hmm. I absolutely loved, because obviously, um, coming out, especially at a time where, um, well, you couldn't get married, okay? Um... Or the the law treated you as separate. Yep, here we go. Right, I just like this when people come out and they're coming out of stories are heartwarming. Right, right. Um, Robbins was um, the the atypical kick you out of the house never see you again. There you go. And Charlie, I love this. Who's the older one? There you go. My mother couldn't be more different. Said Charlie. She was in London. I hear moved up to Yorkshire where she married my father. After Dad, when I was eight, she went, she went back to live with my grandmother, and the two of them brought me up between them. It was quite obvious from an early age that I wasn't going to marry a nice girl one day and continue the family line. They tend to grow out of it, but when they realised it wasn't to be, they both came to terms with it and said to me for who I was. Right. So, that's, yeah, so that's, um, that's nice. Okay, even though uh, Charlie's mum did remarry, and he was a terrible person, it was definitely high personality, and then Trying to work his ass or trying to keep his family together. So, but anyway. Right, but the issue is this, okay? Now, Charlie's dying. Now, this is a trope I keep seeing in a lot of books like this, okay? Like romantic romantic fiction. Uh, Jenny Cogan did it, okay, with the um, Shot by the Sea books, okay? And bringing Colton, who's going for Happy Rich, Colton died. Is, can lots of us keep bringing in gay couples okay um sophie kinsella did it um as well is bringing in a gay couple one of them who is dying okay to teach just heterosexuals how to kind of live life better be better like like, like we're magical we're not okay and one thing is really annoying me, okay is okay they're always dying of cancer okay now back in the 80s cancer was a code name for something else, okay? So when you read a book, okay, of someone is dying of cancer, a gay man is dying of cancer, I guess it kind of reminds you, okay, of the code words back in the day, okay? Someone's dying of cancer because the original, um, one of the original names of that horrible, horrible retrovirus which took some members of the community was um, Carposi sarcoma, which is a form of cancer, okay? So it really, really annoys me how it keeps happening, okay? You bring in a gay couple and kill one of them off to teach the heteros a lesson of how to live better. Like, we're magical. We are not, we are the magical gays. Yeah. It's infuriating. It's kind of, everyone gets a happy ending, okay? It's like, for Wednesday in a Funeral, one of the earliest examples, not one of the earliest examples in film, okay? But for Wednesday in a Funeral, who's the funeral for? Right. Okay. Yep. And the thing is, okay, with between Luke and Mary, because as a character, Mary is the kind of character I went slap for this, is, right, is the fact is that Mary's had so many great ideas for Luke's comedy. She was originally his father's PA. His father wasn't that great when it came to treating women that great. And then she got kind of passed on, okay, to Luke when he, um, he took over the company. Right. Right. Sorry, Jack, see, not Jack, Luke. Alright, Jack, it's Jack. Jack has a vegan company, and Luke is plant boy. But the problem, okay, they're both in films, okay, that are so identical that it blurs the lines. Right. Mm -hmm. 
the vegans going to the market and were absolutely well. And ahead of our product development said, would you follow suit? We could have led, not followed, if I listened to Mary. But we weren't too late, thank the Lord, and they were a massive idea. And I gave product development the credit for the idea. Out, said Luke. It gets better or ever worse. The vegan scones weren't good enough at first, and it was Mary, not the baker, bakery team, whom I need to visit the recipe. She suggested we use red cheese instead of white, so the cheese scones look a bit obviously cheesy. She suggested that we make luxury short life ranges exclusive to high end stores. All of these are brilliant ideas. Right. Okay. So Mary has been giving Jack, Jack, not Luke, Jack. All these great ideas for his company. He's made millions. He's been given credit because in his mind, I guess, she's just a PA, okay? You shouldn't be thinking outside the box. And it's kind of like he has an epiphany, okay, of how he should be treating Abella. And he starts to actually fall for her. But knowing, okay, you're like, I so wanted Mary to forget about this guy. I so wanted Mary to just go on and meet someone who treated her kind, start her own business with her great ideas and ground Jack into the dust. But no, okay? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. And the fact is, okay, that when May says, oh, I'm on my way out, okay, I'm I'm putting my resignation, okay, Britta's offered me a job, I'm going to figure it all out, and I'm going to do great, this bit here, okay? Right. Could you honestly blame May for seeking passions in you after he tweeted her? So much as appreciative than he should have. She was young and clever and lovely, and all he'd done for her was for her to treat her like her father treated people. He wasn't interested in him romantically. Of course, she wouldn't want him to wine and dine her in for ends. Right. What if he'd been thinking of writing his invitation in the in the diary? How did that she hadn't seen it? What an idiot she was. He said out of his comfort zone, got burned, and that was time to retreat, hopefully with his little dignity. Yeah. But in the end, okay, um, uh, Jack and Mary kind of saw that out. And there's a bit where at the end where it turns out okay that for four years mary's been given crappy gifts because one of the assistants is like i mean she basically wants mary's job and she's like oh i get the gifts and she gives mary horrible horrible gifts okay and luke pulls this woman into his office and it's like a mere interview okay, i need a pa and he calls her out on it and then okay you're like why are you blaming her for giving crappy gifts okay when you're the one who should be giving your PA gifts in the first place. It seems like the past the buck. You know when okay, you're reading the book and you think, Mary, you are too good for Jack. Okay? But I keep getting Jack and Luke mixed up. Then I the problem with this book. Jack, Luke, it's just... Not, you know, we've both got K's in them. So, and one thing I did like was that throughout this entire thing of them being together, there's like a radio show. A guy called Radio Brian who tells like old, plays old songs. Um, tells old jokes, um, plays, you know, reads Christmas stories, they'll sit around the fire and they kind of like bond like that. And at the end there's a hint of maybe there's a bit of kind of magic going on, a little bit of Christmas magic, okay, regarding Radio Brian. I would like to see this turn into a film, by the way, because it has potential. But when the characters blur so much, I, and this was a risk for an author, okay, me Johnson is very established, he's a very, very good author. Just to take six characters, whack them in this one place for a week. At the time, I just felt myself just trying to get to the next bit because this whole kind of, we need to do this, we're putting in decorations, we're doing this, we're doing that. Oh, I liked it, but at the same time, I just found the trope of you're going to kill off the gay couple. Great, one of the gay couple. It's annoying as infuriating. It's kind of like, well, we've lived our time and now we're here to dispense wisdom about love and life and you know, peace and love and happiness, and I've, I've embraced and going to die, okay, and then shove off the mortal coil, because he taught the straights a lesson, it's infuriating, so anyway, um, sign off here, do I recommend it, yes I do, Millie Johnson, I wish it could be Christmas every day, sign off here, take care, yo, bye now.